I must tell you, the tone of the entire meetings was good, positive. This was a productive meeting. Both U.S. President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin described their first in-person summit as a constructive one at separate news conferences on Wednesday, with the two leaders agreeing to return ambassadors to their posts in the near future and hold further talks about nuclear arms control and cybersecurity. But deep divisions were evident on a range of issues at the talks in Geneva, Switzerland, where Putin denied Russia played any role in a spate of recent cyber attacks against the United States, no. and where Biden hinted at retaliation if they didn't stop. I pointed out to him we have significant cyber capability. And he knows it. He doesn't know exactly what it is, but it's significant. And if, in fact, they violate these basic norms, we will respond. Biden also said he told Putin that certain U.S. critical infrastructure should be off limits to cyber attacks. Putin said Russia had been the target of numerous cyber attacks originating from the U.S. Another sticking point was the issue of human rights. In perhaps his strongest warning, Biden said there would be repercussions if jailed opposition leader Alexei Navalny, who was on hunger strike to protest his detention in Russia, died in prison. I made it clear to him that I believe the the consequences of that would be devastating for Russia. Putin dismissed the concerns about Navalny and suggested that the January 6th rioters were being persecuted for political opinions. People went into U.S. Congress with political demands. 400 people are now facing criminal charges. That's a ridiculous comparison. There was little compromise on a range of other issues, including Russia's increased military presence near Ukraine's border. Biden said he also brought up the fate of U.S. citizens jailed in Russia. Putin said he believed some compromises could be found, although he gave no indication of any deal for a prisoner exchange. Did it really happen? Questions are being raised about the real-life Jonah, the guy who claims he was swallowed by a whale. I just was in there struggling, banging. Michael Packard was lobster diving in Cape Cod on Friday when he says the humpback whale sucked him right into his mouth before spitting him out after 30 seconds. He was just going along and I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Whale of a tail sounds fishy, goes this headline. You would expect more serious injuries, one Cape Cod doctor was quoted as saying. He had no soft tissue damage and no broken bones. But this 54-year-old scuba diver says he totally believes the story. I believe it uh, fully. It, it is possible. Why? Because Reiner Schimpf had an almost identical experience back two years ago and has the photos to prove it. That's his body sticking out of the mouth of a whale who'd swallowed him off the coast of South Africa when he was filming footage of the sardine run. Without the picture, it's very difficult to prove that you've actually been inside. Whale swallowing humans is exceedingly rare. The odds it will happen are one in a trillion, according to one expert. He wasn't harmed, I wasn't harmed, and uh, it was like a happy end. 